Today's theme is John the Baptist. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, just and true. To you be praise and glory forever. Your prophet John the Baptist was witness to the truth. As a burning and shining light, may we, may we, your servants, rejoice in his light. And so be led to witness to him who is the Lord of our coming kingdom, Jesus our Savior and King of Kings. Lord, Lord our Father, you gave to Zachariah and Elizabeth in their old age a son called John. He grew up strong in spirit, prepared the people for the coming of the Lord, and baptized them in the Jordan to wash away their sins. Help us who have been baptized in Christ to be ready to welcome him into our hearts, and to grow strong in faith by the power of the Spirit. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Lord Jesus, In terms of the college for the day. Stir up your power, O Lord, with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by your, by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory. Now I am forever. Amen. We say together the call it for Advent Sunday. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son Jesus Christ came to visit us and great that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty, to judge both the living and the dead, you may rise to the life immortal, to him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit now for the ministry of the word, which you can follow on the screen or in your bulletin at your convenience. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Chapter 61, 1 to 4, and 2 11. The Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our Lord. To comfort all who mourn and to, and to provide for those who mourn in Zion. To give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint spirit. They will be called oak of righteousness the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastation. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as the garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Psalm for this morning is number one, two, six. You found on page six of the bulletin or on the monitor. When the Lord restores 
from the word of God written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, which is 16 to 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all the circumstances, but this is the word of God, Christ Jesus, for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and you will do this. The word of God.
A reading of the Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter, beginning at the sixth verse. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John and the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you a prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah had said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know. The one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of the sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise Christ our Lord. Sing the chorus, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Parents of 
these candidates or these compliments. These children cannot come to church on their own. They're not driving as yet. They have no license. So please, we need to bring them to church. They have begun a new phase of their walk with Christ. Please encourage them. We often run to the priest or run to, the, to somebody when our children get in trouble. Oh Lord, where did I go wrong? You went wrong the day you let the church stay home from church. Amen? Amen. All right. That's all I can say to you now. For now. This morning, my brothers and sisters, I want to reflect on some words from our gospel for the third Sunday in Advent, verse 23 of John's gospel, chapter 1. He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Make straight the way of the Lord. My friends, John the Baptist was an unusual prophet. How so? He was a what I call a transitional prophet. He began in the Old Testament and ended up in the New. If you count the timelines between the Old and the New. He was a prophet that what we normally call the last of the great prophets. And he was sent for a particular reason to prepare for the coming of Christ. In terms of the Jews, it was to prepare for the coming of the Messiah, whom they still was looking for. But for John, but for Jesus, it was to prepare the way of the Savior. Two different terms, two different plans, two different purposes, I should say. And so even though John was questioned in our gospel today about who he was, John came preaching a message of repentance, a message of change your ways before the Lord comes. And John's signature, I guess you could call it item that he used, was baptism. And it is from then that the church followed baptism and made it a sacrament. Baptism meaning Christian initiation, Christian membership into the body of Christ. But John used it in a different sense. John used it as a symbol of washing away of a new life. Putting away the old and taking on the new. Just a small put on chair to the back of And so John's message was to change, be baptized, and you will then be all right with God. Now, John also talked about, I baptize with water. But there's one coming greater than me who will baptize with water and the Spirit. And of course, he was referring to Jesus. And since that time, the church has taken on the sacrament of baptism, and we are using baptism as a means of a new life in Christ. Now today in, in the world, and in, in the Anglican communion, and the Anglican doctrine, we practice infant baptism mostly. But in those days, persons were submerged in water, the river, the lake, and they came up fresh and new. And that's what John practiced in his preaching. Go under one way, come out another way. It's kind of similar to what I told these married persons when they were leaving the church. During the rehearsal for the weddings, I said to them, you come in one way and you leave out another way. They come in on one side and then they switch and go out another way. Meaning something has changed in your life. And it's the same with baptism that John preached. Go under the water, a sinful creature. Come out of the water, a healed man or woman. Now today, of course, we use infant baptism, but we can't submerge people, babies, because they might drown. But it's the, the sense of water and cleansing that is really of the essence of baptism. 
And so what am I saying all of this for to leave with you this morning? John said, I am come to prepare the way for the Lord. And my brothers and sisters, as we look at Advent this year, as we look at the world in which we live, as we look at our Bahama land, with all these things going on, with, with the pandemic and, and with unemployment and with people out of work and people hungry and a lot of people that want no food. When we look at all these things, what role can we play as we prepare for a new coming of Christ? Because every Advent is preparation for a new coming. Not so much for the manger and the baby and the carols, but for when Christ will come again. It's a preparation. That's why I sang the chorus, Lord, prepare me. We are constantly in a state of preparation. Preparing for Christ to come again. And guess what? He comes every day in our lives. He comes every time that you are a good person. A kind person, a caring person, a nice person, someone who stays on the high road, someone who doesn't get down in the dirt and the gutter of life. Christ is coming in your life. And so, my brothers and sisters, my message to you today, my, my challenge, my exhortation to you is, you have a role to play in preparing for the coming of the Lord. It's not just a priestly role. It's not just a role for the clergy or the lay readers. It's a role for all of us as baptized people of God. We are called to, to prepare for the coming of the Lord. And how do we do that? Not everyone is called to be a preacher. Not everyone is called to be a teacher. You all and we all have our roles to play. You can easily prepare for the coming of the Lord in the way you live your life. Where you go, who you hang around, who's in your presence or in your company. You can easily prepare for the way of the Lord. How? How can we prepare just as an ordinary joke? How can we prepare for the coming of the Lord? By the person you are. So that just by a glimpse, someone can see a semblance of Christ. In you. If only they could see a semblance, just a little touch of Christ, then you don't know who you might have changed along the road of life. How can we do this? By being genuine, nice people, kind people, caring people, loving people, generous people, helping people. That's all people need and that's all people want. A smile. A handshake. Well, you can't shake hands right now, but a bump. Someone to talk to. Someone to share. Someone to maybe give a meal if they're hungry. That's all people want right now. And so, my brothers and sisters, we all have a role to play in the journey of Christ. Don't just leave it to the priest. Or don't take it off when you leave the church. And Pick it back up when you come next week. Take on your mantle. Take on your role as a servant of God. Prepare it for the way of the Lord. Prepare by the way you live. Live a good life. It doesn't mean you're going to be holy. Because God knows some of us ain't holy. Including me. You will fall down. You will make mistakes. You will sometimes even feel like cussing. Nothing wrong with that. The fact of the matter is, you clean yourself off, you forgive yourself, ask God to forgive you, and you move on, trying to be a better person. My brothers and sisters, if you could just live a life where you can be kind and talk positive, lift people up, encourage people, lend a hand if you can, you'd be surprised who you will change. What's the saying go? You get more for people with honey than you get with, can't remember. My grandma used to say, you attract more fly with what? Honey. Than you do with something else. That's how it go. I get old and I start to go. 
But, I, but anyhow, my grandma used to say that all the time. With kindness. You attract more people with kindness than you do with the kind of something like that. But you get the point. The point is, just be yourself, but be a nice person. Don't walk around all holy and sanctified and safe when you know you're not. But just try your best as you struggle along the way of life to be a good person. God only wants good people in this earth. He wants people who will smile and be happy and take care of people and help people and don't turn anyone away. That's all he wants. And we all can do that. Amen? Amen. And so today as we continue in our journey, let's all in our own situations, wherever we may be, at home, at work, at play, at relaxation, let's prepare for the way of the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us now stand for our intercessions, the prayers of the people. Page eight. Upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand for what we call a virtual peace, a peace from afar. Remember, we all are called to prepare for the way of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Peace to everybody here this morning. May you live peaceful. Our offertory hymn in which you can place your offerings in the box in the front or in the back.
In him you are birthed out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of it. Therefore, Father, according to his command, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine, we pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice that we may accept the bullet in, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, then, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of life where you dwell with all your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord. The firstborn of all creatures, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Though we can't join hands, we can join hearts as we say the Lord's prayer. Our Father in heaven.
house that we can give them thanks and praise this morning that we can share this table we pray so we'll be able to share this blood as we thank God for those on the front line of this pandemic our hospital workers and doctors and other hospital employees and lab techs and all those who take the samples our police, our defense force. We pray that our cases may remain low if we follow the guidelines and the procedures. Wear our masks, social distance. Wash our hands often, sanitize. Pray that many of our people will follow these guidelines and protocols, especially our young people. They will stay out of the clubs and the lounges and the bars in large numbers. We offer all this today. We say together, Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us. Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Please be seated for a few moments. by given that Philip Jeffrey Keel Jr. of the parish of Holy Cross in Providence and the parish of the Pro-Cathedral of Christ the King, Grand Bahama, intends to offer himself as a candidate for the Holy Office of Priest at the ensuing ordination on Monday, December 14th by the Lord Bishop of the Bahamas of the Turks and Caicos Islands. And if any person knows any cause or just impediment by the said Philip Jeffrey Keel Jr., should not be admitted to this holy order. He is to declare, or she, declare the same directly to the bishop. My third time of asking. A pleasant good morning to you all. Good morning. I trust you have a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day in the Bahamas. Many people long to wake up their day like this, you know. Then they got snow and ice and sleep. Thank God for what we got. Just want to highlight a few announcements and our condolences. We want to give condolences to one of our lay readers, Jamal Turnquest, on the passing of his grandmother, Patricia Turnquest, and also in the family of the late Dr. Vernet Patterson. We extend condolences to all of them at this time. May their souls rest in peace. Tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock at the Pro-Cathedral of Christ the King, Deacon Heal will be made a priest. He is in Grand Bahama at this time. He just finished his retreat yesterday, and he will return to the parish on Thursday of this week. Pray for, for I nearly say Father Heal, to pray for Deacon Heal and his family as he prepares tomorrow for his ordination. I will be going to Grand Bahama in the morning return on Tuesday. Yes, I got my test. I made it. Yes, I got my visa. I'm ready to go. Now next Sunday, Father Heal will celebrate his first Masses as a priest here at Holy Cross at, on Saturday at 10 a.m. On I moved it back to 10 a.m. on 7 and 9.30 next Sunday, the 20th. Um, there will be taking away refreshments after the morning, the Sunday services, as well as he will cut some cakes at the end of both services on the porch. And you can take the cake away with you as you leave. This is a way of celebrating a special day for him. There are also love envelopes in the back of church, love offering envelopes, and um, 
you're gonna, if you want to give Father Heal a gift on this occasion, I'm sure he would appreciate it. The Vestry will meet on Tuesday of this week on Zoom at 6.30 p.m. as we finalize the 2021 budget. Bring me those forms. Frank, bring me those. As we finalize the 2021 budget. Hopefully all Vestry members will. Hopefully all Vestry members will um, be able to get on Zoom at 6.30. We will send the link that day on the Vestry chat. I continue to need some donations for Christmas flowers and poinsettias to beautify the church as much as possible. The decorators come in on December 21st to get the church ready for the season of Christmas. I also am looking for Christmas gifts for kids. And I, you know this is a very dear to my heart project as I love to go and give children gifts at Christmas time, I feel like jolly old Saint Nick, and I'm beginning to look like him with this belly. But if you can help with gifts for children, please put them in the box in the back. I already took a full box over to the office. I now have two new boxes out there. If you can give us some gifts for children, up to 12 years old, boy or girl, mark it on the gift, what um, the level, who it is, a boy or girl, what age. The 2021 offering envelopes are available at two side doors. Some of you offered not to get envelopes this year, and others have still asked for their envelopes. Please check and take yours with me today. I think that's all I need to highlight today. I also have confirmation certificates for those candidates, so after the service, please see me so I can give you your certificate from the bishop. Anybody celebrating birthdays or anniversaries this, today, this week? Oh, yes. Sons' wedding anniversary. How many years? 28. Nearly for the big 30. I know that's going to be one big one. Especially with no COVID. All kind of dancing on that. I'll pray for you all separately. Um, wedding anniversary or birthday? Who's birthday? Your son? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, first of all, let's pray for those who celebrate another year of life. Continue to watch over them and keep them safe and sound. Bless them and bless in their lives. In Jesus' name. And Father God, we want you to now pray for those who celebrate another year of marriage. Continue to be the third and unseen guest in their home. Continue to let them rely on each other for strength and love. And to back them up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all very much. Happy anniversary. Humble. I'm getting old, you know. There you go. Thank you all very much. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Please follow the Christmas services in the bulletin. There's just one change. The Saturday service will turn to 10 a.m. instead of 6 p.m. I'll correct that with you. Our recessional hymn.
departed to the mercy of God, rest in peace. Have a beautiful day. Same to you.